Okay, today I wanted to talk about TPNs because I see a lot of nutrition students and interns get overwhelmed when they have to do a TPN calculation. I know I definitely did. Sometimes it can be hard to even know where to start. I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail since I'm not a CNSC, but I want to show you how to do the basic calculations to help you on your undergraduate exams. Every hospital is going to be a little bit different. You may have a custom bag, which you can tailor to your patients, but most places have a standard formula. For example, at mine, we have a 20% dextrose and a 5% amino acid solution. On the chart, this might look like D20AA5%. What the percentages basically mean is that for every 100 milliliters of solution, you'll have that many grams of that nutrient. For example, if I have 100 milliliters of an amino acid 5% D20% solution, I'll have 5 grams of amino acid and 20 grams of dextrose in that bag. The first thing you'll want to do when calculating a TPN is to calculate your patient's needs. I'll create a patient. Let's say they need 1,750 to 2,300 kcals and 70 to 90 grams of protein. And then we'll say they need 1,500 to 2,000 milliliters of fluid. The hardest part is often getting started. If you have a custom bag, I recommend starting with your fluids as your known variable. But if you have a standard bag, I would start with calculating the protein and use the grams of protein as your known variable. Now for this example, let's pretend I only have a D20% and a 5% amino acid solution. I can choose any gram of protein within my range. I'll pick 80 for right now because it's in the middle. Here's how I set this up. 5 grams of amino acid over 100 milliliter solution equals 80 grams of amino acid over X milliliters. I then cross multiply and divide by 5. That gives me how many milliliters I need in my bag. Now let's figure out the rate. To figure out the rate, divide by 24. That gives me 66.6 .6 milliliters per hour. For two feeds and TPNs, we like to round to the nearest five for our rates because it's easy on the nurses. If the patient's on a mechanical ventilator, I often recommend rounding down. So I'd round to 65 milliliters per hour. To recalculate the total milliliters in the solution, I multiply by 24. That gives me 1,560 milliliters per day. So 1,560 milliliters is going to be how many milliliters is in your bag of dextrose and amino acid solution. You'll want to recalculate the protein again since you did change the rate and the amount of solution you were providing. To recalculate how much protein you'll get from 1,560 milliliters, set the equation up just like we did before. But instead of the X being the milliliter, it'll be the grams of protein. So 5 grams over 100 milliliters equals X grams over 1,560 milliliters. Cross multiply and divide both sides by 100 and you get 78 grams. And that's the amount of protein we'll have in our solution. Okay, now we can figure out how many grams of dextrose we'll have. This time the milliliter of solution will be our known variable. To set up the calculations for a D20 solution, we'll set up the calculations like this. 20 grams of dextrose over 100 milliliter solution equals X over 1560 milliliters. Then we cross multiply and divide both sides by 100 milliliters. That gives us 312 grams of dextrose. The other thing you'll want to calculate is the GIR. This is the glucose infusion rate. It's calculated by milligrams over kcals over minutes. The key is to notice it's milligrams, not grams, and the kilograms it's talking about is the body weight of the patient, and the minutes is the minute of the day, which is equal to 1,440 minutes. The GR should usually be under 4 to prevent hyperglycemia. It's okay it's, if it's even lower than 4, um, but 4 is usually the max. If after doing the calculation you notice your GIR is above 4, then you'll want to reduce the rate you deliver the TPN. If you do change the rate of the TPN, remember you'll have to recalculate everything else. So for our person, let's say they're 5'5 and weigh 60 kilograms. To calculate the GIR, I multiply the grams of dextrose by 1,000, then divide that by 60 kilograms because that's how much our patient weighs, then divide that by 1,440 minutes because that's how many minutes are in a day. 
that would give us a GIR of 3.6 milligrams over kilograms over minutes. That's under 4, so as long as this person's blood glucose levels weren't elevated or increasing dramatically, it should be okay. Now let's talk about lipids. You usually have the option to add lipids or not. I recommend adding lipids unless the patient's triglycerides are elevated or they aren't tolerating lipids for another reason. The IV lipids come in bottles of 10% and 20% emulsions. The 10% emulsions contains 1.1 kcals per milliliter and the 20% emulsions contain 2 kcals per milliliter. For example, if I have 250 milliliters of a 20% lipid emulsion, that will give me 500 kcals from lipids because 250 milliliters times 2 kcals per milliliter equals 500 kcals. If it was the 250 milliliters of a 10% emulsion, that would give me 275 kcals from lipids because 250 milliliters times 1.1 kcals per milliliter equals 275 kcals. Now we want to figure out how many calories this entire thing will give us. The amount of kcals per grams of dextrose would be a little bit different than our normal carb calculations. During, for the TPN, every gram of dextrose equals 3.4 kcals. Protein is the same as normal, it's 4 kcals per gram. To find kcals from dextrose, multiply 3.4 kcals times grams dextrose. Since we have 312 grams of dextrose, that gives us 1,060 kcals. To find kcals from protein, multiply 4 kcals times grams of protein. Since we have 78 grams of protein, that will give us 312 kcals. Then add the kcals from fat. I'm going to go ahead and use the 250 milliliter of the 20% solution, which gives me 500 kcals from fat. Altogether, that gives me 1,870 2 kcals and 78 grams of protein. You'll want to check your numbers to make sure you didn't miss a step and you can also check it online at ClinCalc. I really recommend getting this down by hand first and checking your numbers by yourself and getting practice of it and then start using the ClinCalc. Before administering, you'll also want to check the patient's potassium, magnesium, phosphorus, sodium, and triglyceride labs. If any labs are normal, fix these before starting the TPN. Start the TPN at half the goal rate, so if your goal rate was 65 millis per hour, divide by half to get your starting rate. This time I'll round down to 30 milliliters per hour to make it easy. The next day, check the labs again. If everything is looking good, increase the rate by 15 milliliters per hour. Your hospital probably has a procedure as well, so it may not be 15 milliliters per hour, it may be to 75% or something like that. Continue each day until at the goal rate. If the labs are abnormal, hold the TPN, replete the electrolytes, and then continue at the same rate. It's important not to advance the TPN if the electrolyte rates start to decrease or increase outside of the normal levels because this can indicate refeeding syndrome. That's my intro to TPN calculations. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me at isabellabrownnutrition.com or on Instagram at isabellabrownnutrition. Thanks.